And we're back live here at .com 2012 Splunk's user conference, annual user conference. We're here in Las Vegas, broadcasting live from the Cube. We're at the Cosmopolitan Hotel. I am Jeff Kelly from Wikibon.org. I'm with my co-host Jeff Frick from SiliconANGLE. Great, we're back. Welcome everybody. We are we're excited to keep the day rolling, and, and uh, I know you're probably getting tired of looking at uh, Jeff and Jeff. So we've got somebody who's a little more fun to look at, Michael Wild. The Chief of Awesome. So if, you, if you've always aspired to have a great job at a great company, I think Chief of Awesome would be, uh, would be tough, to, tough to beat. I also go by Jeff as well. <laughs> and you can go by Jeff so yes. we can get Jeff Cube in the queue in case you were <laughs> a little slow. Because it has been a long day. The rain has stopped. The sun is still not out. Up, and up, we're, up. we're still having Literally. fun here at the Cube. So again, we're at the Cosmopolitan Hotel in Las Vegas. If you're close by, stop by. If you're not, join the conversation by using the data journey hashtag on Twitter. This is the third annual Worldwide User Conference, Conf uh, 2012. It's uh, over a thousand people. The excitement is tremendous. We've got the, the vendor fair out there. People are uh, slowly waiting for the coffee to roll away and something else to roll into its place as we get closer and closer to that time. But we're happy to have Michael with us. He's going to show us, I think, some, some interesting things uh, that you can do with Splunk. We've heard lots of stories. But uh, as I say, a picture's worth a thousand words, and I don't know what that makes an app worth, but this is a big data show, so we should be safe. I have a thousand right. pictures, so that's <laughs> gonna be like a, a million words. Well, first of all, we have, to, we have to get a better understanding of what the Chief of Awesome does. <laughs> I also understand you're also chief of tuxedo fitting, you mentioned <laughs> That and uh, e collating and filing as well. Wow. So, um, yeah. I work in the CTO's office at Splunk, and the main focus that I've had for the past six, seven months is on social and mobile. Um, using those as data sources that go inside of Splunk and also helping customers or people with um, challenges around mobile, whether it's an SDK or whether it's understanding how mobile impacts their environment. So the social stuff is, is really interesting um, to a lot of the folks that see it because it's kind of a other than expected data source you would put into Splunk, when you put it in there, the data really comes alive. So when we're talking social, we're talking uh, Facebook, Twitter, are we talking the actual content of sure. updates and things like that and mm -hmm. drawing correlations with other machine generated data? And Some, yeah, yeah, sometimes, that. right? So that's a good use case. I have a session coming up tomorrow or Thursday, probably after everyone leaves, at 2.45 <laughs> with my friend David Carrasso. <laughs> and, uh, and the interesting thing is, there, there is a very compelling use case for um, IT and marketing, IT and the brand to collide, right? Because when we have a service, or even the, you know, um, when people are talking about the cube, they'll talk about how great it is. Or if, for example, Actually. let's say something has a problem, they're gonna tweet about that as well. And the marketing folks will understand the brand impact right away. But the IT folks that are managing the systems might not necessarily be aware of it, mm -hmm. right? And I did a search on the word site, I'm taking Twitter data, taking Twitter data in, search on the word site, and then the phrase is down. And you'd be surprised how many people will be happy to talk about their favorite site that's not quite working. Yet, if you take that data and combine it with maybe the infrastructure data, you could probably have a pretty good picture where both uh, groups that really have sort of an understanding of mm -hmm. how IT and brand are impacting each other. So that's interesting. but. Yeah, data is coming from um, many of the social networks out there, um, either publicly available or through partners. Mm -hmm. And you really didn't have to build anything extra in Splunk. It sort of just worked, but it became magical when we started looking at it. And I'll show you guys some of that a bit later. And just to kind of, uh, as a measure of scale, what is the, the kind of the social um, flow of data, the social media data flow, versus some of these machine data flows that you guys are involved with? Is it you know, just infinitesimally small? Is it way, way big? Is it small but growing fast that we need to pay attention? Or is it just because we think it's relevant and it's a new important data stream that we want to play with it? Well, I think it's the latter. It's the important data stream that you want to play with because of the, the case that we talked about, right? Some people need to look at social networking data for the purposes of just analyzing their brand or uh, how their brand is perceived. It is rare that most folks need the entire corpus of, let's say, Twitter or Tumblr or something like that. Mm -hmm. But I've been working with a couple of the third party re-syndicators of data. One of them, there's some folks running around here, a company called Ginnip, they're out of Boulder. And um, they provide access to the feeds directly. So you don't have to go to Twitter and all these other companies. But if you look at on average, if I was to take all that, the entire social web and put it in Splunk, if I were to do that, based on the 
publicly available statistics, you're probably talking about two to three terabytes a day. If you were to ever index the whole thing, most customers really wouldn't do that because they don't need it. They need a very small time slice or a very small set of phrases around the things that they're interested in. And okay. Some of those third-party providers provide that, or even Twitter does as well. So. All right, cool. So let's uh, let's dig into uh, some of the videos we've got here. And I know our audience loves to see uh, kind of our, these types of products and actions, some really compelling stuff. So uh, what do you have here for us? So what's kind of fun is we, we got started with social um, kind of a, on an accident. Um, the CE, CTO and co-founder, Eric Swan, I don't know if you talked to him, he kind of roped me into doing a presentation at South by Southwest this year. And it was about big data. And I, I didn't want to do something related to firewalls because all the firewalls are awesome. I didn't think people at South by would really get it. So I called up my friends at GNIP and said, can I have some social networking data to show? Because it would be you know, an easy thing for folks to understand. And out of that, we also created some videos and a few things. You heard Godfrey talk about the social stuff at South By in, um, in, uh, in his keynote. And so we started looking at it there, and we provided some dashboards for South By. And then we had things like the Olympics come up. Um, we've got Splunk User Conference, so there's things going on. And then all sorts of other random things on the, on the social network. So kind of starting in reverse, let's look at Splunk User Conference. Okay, So what can we capture if we captured all of the um, stream of uh, data from coming from Foursquare, right? The social location-based network. Um, there's a venue here for Splunk User Conference. So you can check in. Mm -hmm. And uh, then there's also people tweeting, obviously. And so we have a simple chart here just looking at a distribution of um, Foursquare check-ins versus tweets. Obviously, it's, people would check in maybe once, but they would tweet thousands of times. You know, and this is just over the user conference. I built this dashboard in about five minutes. It, it's pretty much just looking at the data, point and clicking, and that's one of the things I like about Splunk. Even six, almost seven years later, I've been here for that long, it is really simple to use. We can look at like the tweet volume here on, um, you know, from Monday, where we had things like uh, the pre-conference classes to when the, um, the actual keynote happens. So you start seeing that. Right, so this, you see, naturally you see the spike when, when the conference starts to kick off. Uh, Godfrey is doing his presentation, right? right? And you'll probably see these things like lulls during lunch and during other popular um, times, people will show that. Um, my buddy David Carrasso, who works in the CTO's office, he's the one who wrote the book on Splunk, yep. literally. We have the book, book. Yeah. signed. We have the, the awesome. signed book, yeah, as a matter of fact. <laughs> I just have the PDF, so um, I'm kind of digital. <laughs> well, you know, we'll, we'll put it in a word. Maybe we can get you a signed copy. I, I hope so. I hope to meet him someday. Um, David, uh, one of his main focuses in computer science is on natural language processing. So he's written some technology that looks at sentiment. Um, Splunk typically is good at numbers, right? Statistics um, and eating any kind of data. But we're doing sentiment analysis on text. So we're looking at the actual text of the tweets and determining whether there's a positive or a negative sentiment. There's always some measure of error. But um, we have things like someone was talking about how one of the talks was going a bit slow, and that you know we'll see a negative sentiment. But overall, you're not going to please everybody, but people are really happy so far about um, the, the uh, conference as well. And that's just coming off of tweets. And we started looking at hashtags here. I mean, we recommend that people start to tweet with the hashtags as well. Mm -hmm. um, and what? And we're just looking at a very small amount of Twitter data focused on certain terms that might be Splunk, Conf12, and a few others, and then making sense out of them. And then, of course, I can actually look at the live tweet stream that's coming right here. So, you know, I don't know if um, we've got some issues here on Silicon Angle. That's awesome. <laughs> and, uh, you know, people are not getting sleep at Conf12 because they're having a lot of fun. That's great. Um, so being able to actually, for the marketing people here in Splunk, you can actually watch how people are feeling just right here in Splunk, which is kind of cool. Yeah, digging a little bit more on how um, you know, useful this data can be, what, what are some of the things you, you could potentially do and kind of the new correlations you might be able to make? Well, some of the correlations you might be interested in, so if you're looking at social data, you're looking at human behavior mm -hmm. or human conversation. So um, you might, for example, let's say, look at um, the Splunk for Good project, which is one of our corporate social responsibility projects out there. Um, they're doing some work around uh, the... Uh, the elections, right? So we could take and look at, um, and, and the other thing is like Splunk is a tool that not just nerds can use. So you could get a feed, if you were a marketing person, go bring the data inside of Splunk and very quickly develop dashboards without having to hire a bunch of people to do that. And 
We've even used David's um, sentiment stuff to look at sentiment about the two candidates, which is pretty much about the same, but then you're seeing bookmarks on Facebook. Which particular ones that people are actually bookmarking? How are they creating bookmarks? So the, uh, a brand might be um, concerned about how people are interacting with their web property, what devices they're having, and potentially what errors are occurring as well. There's a lot of fun stuff here. So if you start to look at things like Foursquare, right? Foursquare is a location-based social network. Mm -hmm. We mashed up this little dashboard with looking at things like hashtags trending this hour, that's Twitter, followers, followers versus friends, and this is all real-time data coming in. How are people tweeting? That's cute. When I first started looking at Foursquare data, it gets a little bit um, interesting because you see people, Twitter is conversation. Mm -hmm. Foursquare is doing. So where are people checking in right now? A lot of people actually check in at home for whatever reason. <laughs> so nobody breaks in. We've had a lot of security conversations. I, exactly. <laughs> Swap guys can help you with that too. Or, or you can just not check in. That's always an option. Um, you know, and I started looking at what types of places people are checking in. Where are they shopping? Mm -hmm. Target and Walmart seem to like always go up and down as far as being ahead. But then you start to wonder. And the power of Splunk being able to take the next question in your head and drill in is why another reason why I like it because I do things in a very, you know, um, just ad hoc way. I just give in to my own ADD. And when I originally built this, I wondered like, okay, who's actually hanging at Target? Men versus women. So you might, for example, be a major brand. Maybe you're AT&T or something like that, and you want to know people are checking in at your stores or potentially checking in at stores that are not yours in that mm -hmm. area. You know, even our, you know, the, the, the business is literally right next door. So social data is really nice, and because you can put this all in one platform, which is cool, Starbucks is obviously the most popular coffee company in the world, but you can start to look at that and begin to drill down in things and even look at, well, you know, where are people working out and, you know, who's actually going to the gym. So it gets really fun because they, the, Splunk, the Splunk engineering team has built enough things in here where, you know, a halfway smart person can start to look at the data and just point, click, and, and make some cool intelligence. Well, that, yeah, I think that's a really important point to, to reiterate because you know we hear a lot about the lack of skilled data scientists and other kind of right. business analysts with these really deep uh, skills needed for things like Hadoop and other, other um, analytic approaches. So the easier the tool, the lower the barrier to entry in terms of users uh, and, and of course adoption. Um, so what I really like as well, though, is, is the ability to drill down. You mentioned kind of you want to do ad hoc analysis. Right. Because one of the things about big data is you don't necessarily know where the data is going to take you. Correct. So you kind of need that ability to, to kind of meander, if you will. Um, can, you make, can you show us a little bit more about that and kind yeah. of you can drill down? Yeah, I mean, um, some of the interesting things, here's, here's a fun one where we'll actually do some drill down literally. So one of the cool things about Foursquare is it provides latitude and longitude, mm -hmm. okay? So if we were to take that latitude and longitude and do something like um, run a search in Splunk, but get to the maps here. Hold on. We'll run a search in Splunk and look at things like who's actually having a cocktail right now in the world. Wow. <laughs> so let's, uh, hold on, I just got to pull this up. Should be sweeping across from the east as five o'clock is somewhere uh, east of well, Denver it, right now. You know what? West people like to have fun twenty four hours a day. <laughs> uh, so here we go. Oh, I almost had it. It wouldn't let me use my Mac. Um, I just gotta get it right down here. Here we go. I'll I'll go to another screen and pop it up here because my menus are pretty long. But um, we have an, in, you, you guys have probably been talking to folks about Splunk apps, right? Yep. That are out there. And one of our partners uh, at a company in Germany called SPP, they wrote an app that integrates with Google Maps, which is really cool. So that means if I have things like latitude and longitude or other data points, I can plot those things on a map and make, potentially make that the very first part. And just on the map, it's not necessarily something you could ever just glean in a pile of analytics because you know, your own ability to look at a particular part of the country uh, in the world would be the thing that you know, you, would cause you to drill down. So let's look at, I'm just going to search here on maps and grab my good old search. So let's look at who's having a cocktail. So if I click run here, um, it's going to run a search in real time. 
There he goes, Eric Swan. He's awesome. I think we found one guy. Yeah, we found the guy. Right. That's, yeah, that's the guy. That's one of the guys. Oh, there's two co-founders right there. So if we're playing co-founder bingo, boom. Uh, it's it's a floor wax and a dessert topping all in one, pretty much. So this is, she'll load up in a second here. But so Splunk is running a search against Foursquare. Now it's doing it. In this case, I'm looking in the past 15 minutes. I could pop it up on real time. Okay. And we're also going to go ahead and um, it's going to process it, pull out the latitude and longitude, and then plot that stuff on a map. Uh -huh. Okay. So what we see in front of us is clusters of activity. And you know the thing I really like about this particular app is we could drill down into this and really almost go into the enemy of the state type view all the way down into one particular person. Because you might wonder, like, why? What are they doing? Why are people, this, why is this cluster of 16 particular users here checking in on Foursquare? And as it goes down, you see the clusters go farther and farther and farther. And I'm sure if we, oh, wow. I'm sure if we get down, this, this thing is rendering right now the map itself. So we'll let the thing go. But the cool thing is, if I go down to one and I just click on that, what Splunk is basically going to then do is drill into the raw data, in this case. Mm -hmm. You can customize to your heart's content where the drill-ins happen, and they can fly off in other nice places. But we can actually go down, look on a map, go down to a cluster, and find one particular bar and figure out, who, well, not who. We can say maybe it's a male or a female checking in at this particular venue. Mm -hmm. And it'll come up here in just a second. It's just, as soon as this guy loads. But it gets really interesting you know, right. when you start playing with the data. So in some use cases, that's going to be the kind of thing you want to do. You want to drill down to an individual level. And in yep. other use cases, you're going to want to look at, take a step back right. and get a, a, a wider uh, view. Right. And that step back might be just even looking in a geographic area. Mm -hmm. And because Splunk, one of the key innovations that, um, we, we did at Splunk is we really created a time series engine. Okay. And that turns out to be the vector that's almost most important on when you're looking at any kind of data. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, let's say it's how fast is your website running, the next question is in the past 15 minutes, right. or this year, or last year. And because it's specifically designed for um, time series data, it gets interesting because then I can start going, well, I can watch, potentially I can watch people move, right? If I'm plotting on a map and I'm going over time, I can watch them move. I had a partner that did um, some really cool um, analysis of the New York Marathon. So they could actually see where people were moving based on a mobile app that they created that was tracking location. Of course, it was, um, it was um, the user had to give up their location, obviously, but right. it, was, it was really cool. So anyways, but this guy popped up again. So that one drill in that we did turned out to be someone's having a cocktail at a venue you know, called, um, whatever the name of this place is, 56 Fighter Club. And that's like really pretty much like now, 11, you know, or 15 minutes ago. Uh, this is in GMT. But the ability to just, just deal with the data, and I'm not a data scientist, right? I'm like a half nerd, half um, salesy person, business student, nerd. And so I like things that I can, uh, that can easily give in to my own curiosity. Mm -hmm. And literally all this stuff is just developed really, really fast. Well, yeah, it's interesting because, you know, we're seeing data professionals really start to span all sorts of you know, right. types of titles and use cases and uh, you know it's not just okay I'm an analyst and this is what I do it's I could be in marketing I could be in finance I could be in sales mm -hmm. and data is becoming really important to how I do my job yeah I mean you do, often people who have the data have the power right and, or at least the ability to make the decisions and you know because a beginning user I mean, yes you're gonna need a data scientist because there's a lot more than the average you know, business or marketing or even IT person can necessarily figure out which you know, statistics they want to run. Mm -hmm. But if you can get started with averages, counts, and things like that over time, then you get you know, pretty powerful things very fast. Mm -hmm. so. Very cool. Um, so you, know, you mentioned uh, a little bit about you know, working on some of the sentiment analysis mm -hmm. stuff. Um, uh, that's a really int interesting use case. So uh, we've only got a couple minutes left. So tell us a little bit about looking forward. You guys are doing some cool stuff. But what are we? Uh, what's on the horizon for you uh, in, in the office of the CTO, yeah, the, the thing, chief of awesome? Yeah, the things that we're focused on. So um, we have the CTO's office has is, is got a couple of like sort of main um, initiatives. Integration with big data. Eddie Satterley, one of our um, guys that's in the office is focused on integrating Splunk with a lot of these big data platforms. Mm -hmm. David Carrasso is focused on the search processing language um, and obviously the book and 
writing some of the stuff around uh, natural language processing, I'm focusing on some of social and mobile, and we're starting to do things like providing access to these social feeds through third parties, okay. giving people things they can download, and then you know, over the next year, looking at, talking to customers, because people are really interested, talking to them about what things they want out of social, and then perhaps delivering a set of apps for them they can download for free on Splunkbase if they have access to a data. Interesting, yeah, we talked a little bit about big data apps today, and you know, that's kind of an area that hasn't developed quite as quickly as I think some of us thought it would. Um, and really that's where, when you bring the power to an end user who's not you know, a data scientist, can do some really interesting things though with these applications. That's, that's where really the power of big data comes through to, to the kind of the average end user. Yeah, it's not just because it's big, right? right. Well, right, <laughs> ultimately it doesn't matter right. how big it is. I mean, if you're not gonna draw any value out of it, what's the point of, right. of uh, you know, prepping it and putting it through all different processes and storing it? Agree. Ultimately you need an application to make use of it. So. Totally agree. Very interesting. All right, well, thanks so much for the demo. Yeah, absolutely. Very, very much appreciate it. Uh, some really cool stuff. Uh, I'm Jeff Kelly with Wikibon.org. You're watching The Cube live from .com, Splunk's annual user conference. We're here uh, at the Cosmopolitan Hotel in Las Vegas. Obviously, we want to thank Splunk uh, for having us here. Uh, it's been a great show so far today. We've had a full day of coverage, uh, lots of great interviews with executives and partners and customers. Uh, so we will be right back in a moment. Myself, Jeff Frick, my co-host uh, from SiliconANGLE, and we will see you shortly uh, after this.